I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction here with your feeder flash for Tuesday, August the 25th, brought to you in part by Ytex Tags. Cash feeder cattle rally was halted uh, to start the week here in response to the bearish cattle on feed report and, and in particular the placement numbers that uh, the, the analysts had expected to be about 106 and they come in at 111. Yes, that's bearish. Uh, yes, it made the markets go down. We hate it when the markets go down, but it was almost nice to see the markets react the way that they should react. Your feeder cattle futures were down pretty good. They should have been. Your, your fat cattle futures were not down too much, especially on the nearby, but as you go further out, they were down some. That's the way they're supposed to react. Well, you know, who to thunk it? Fundamentals and, and, a, and an according response to the fundamentals. But your cash feeder cattle, man, were they down hard. And uh, wasn't really expecting that because we don't usually see, see those turn on a dime. You know, it takes 40 acres to turn those big rigs around. And, and usually your, your cash feeders don't respond. But your, your feeder cattle buyers were ready for some relief. They've been going to sale barns, paying more than they did the day before for, for weeks and weeks and, and really months here. Ever since we started seeing the big uh, yearling feeder cattle um, runs, and uh, both direct and in, on the videos and uh, in your sale barns. But I tell you what, uh, they were ready to have some relief. Uh, these feedlots are pretty full. Uh, we know, noted on the last visit that your, your August 1st inventories are the largest that they've ever been as far as this report's concerned since 1996. Uh, you know, and that's not nearly as big as they are other times of the year, but uh, your feedlots have to have to look down the road. They've, they've likely already contracted uh, some feeding calves for fall delivery. They've got to have room for those cattle. Uh, they they uh, really, you know, as we're getting to the dog days of the, of the summer here, they're tired of straightening up uh, these, these cattle in these extremely hot conditions. It's getting old. And, and it's getting hotter yet. I mean, we've seen kind of a heat wave come across, you know, and every day 95 to 100 degrees or better, and, and it's getting old. Your farmers are starting to think about harvest already. So we're gonna start seeing your, your true farmer feeders kind of dropping out. They've been buying cattle for the last six weeks or so uh, to, to add value to their corn. And now they're starting to pull those combines out and they're putting the, uh, the grease guns to them and, and getting them all ready to go because that's what they love to do. Farmers love to farm. And if you guys don't believe that, I mean, you're not paying attention. When it's time for a farmer to farm, he's got no interest in cattle at all. Well, it's getting just about that time again, guys. And, and they're getting close and, and they've got a bumper crop uh, to, to get uh, harvested, except for that one little strip there where they had the had all the wind damage in there and, and, and too bad for those guys because they had one of the best crops they were ever going to have. And it's just uh, fantastic the way it looks. Uh, the, the corn and beans that haven't had damage to them. But, and you get down in the southern plains, those guys are getting ready to sow wheat. Uh, they probably got uh, need to be working the ground up again, praying for rain. Would love to get a little bit of moisture in here before they start uh, trying to dust that wheat in. But, uh, you know, the things are changing, the, the calendar's changing, and, and uh, weather hasn't changed much, but our seasons are, are just about to change here too. But uh, your, your, your feeder cattle buyers were ready for some relief. Uh, we, we started to see in, in another story, we've seen some pushback on the uh, proposed expanded limits by CME. So that may not go through quite as easy as what they thought. Of course, the CFTC, Commodity Futures Trading Corporation, is uh, they kind of police all that, and they're looking over it and, and looking at the proposal there. But now it looks like they're going to be getting some pushback from the industry. So we'll see if, if that falls on deaf ears or, or if anything happens about it. Uh, another thing that was announced here on Monday was uh, that the, the USDA program Farmers to Families Food Box Program, which is for some of these families, disadvantaged families that have really taken it on the chin uh, during this COVID-19. Uh, they're having a hard time feeding their kids and things like that. Uh, we're going to use some money uh, that was appropriated for the, the COVID relief 
and they're going to to give them a, a, a basically a lunch box but it's going to include uh, animal meat protein which is fantastic they're going to give these people real real uh, meat and it's going to be you know pork and, and beef and the like and they're going to give them fruit and and uh, and we would like for all that to be a USA product well uh, several organizations have signed on to a letter to Sonny Purdue including US Cattlemen's Association saying they want to ensure that the protein that goes in that lunchbox is from the USA and, and not an imported product because there's a little loophole in the language there likely because we don't have country of origin labeling it's going to be hard for them to ensure that that is a USA product product, uh, product. but uh, several of these organizations, uh, some of them regional, some of them national, are, are trying to put pressure on USDA to make sure that is. So uh, by them just putting focus on making sure that that is a USA protein product, uh, that's going to draw more attention to it and, and that's a good thing I think. Let's look at the board on Monday. August live cattle futures down just 22 cents on the spot market there at 105.57. Go out to October down 62. And like I said, your, your cattle on feed report has nothing to do with market ready fat cattle ready to go to the slaughterhouse. As you go out front, it could a little bit and it definitely does on your feeder cattle futures. But October live cattle down 62 cents at 107.92 going out front from there and your your live cattle futures off into the far future down a quarter to down a buck fifteen feeder cattle august spot contract there down 92 cents at 142 even september was down two bucks even at 142.85 going the out fronts down there and it was down 62 cents to down 245 so pretty rough on your feeder cattle futures but you would expect that when the, when the analysts miss the, the placement figure uh, by, by five percentage points, that, that's what you get. Uh, your weighted average on last week's negotiated fed cattle sales, cash sales in your five area feeding region, 114,900 head in your five areas. Compare that to uh, the previous week, 109,200 head. And then uh, a year ago, the same week, we were, you know, in the aftermath of the of the Holcomb fire, only 55,800 head of cash sales, and and I think you know that your your packers are are keeping this cash uh, at a pretty good level because there's a lot of focus on them. A lot of people are watching this deal. Uh, they've even got that, uh, that little uh, experiment that. Uh, the NCBA is going to try where they're going to kind of monitor that and then they're going to hire some research analysts to look at it and do whatever they want them to do. But, uh, but still, they are making an effort to buy more cash cattle. We've seen a significant increase in cash cattle ever since the worst of the gouging uh, during the, the worst of the COVID-19. Now, wouldn't it be nice if we could keep that pressure on your packers to, uh, to consciously try to buy more cash cattle. Maybe a mandate where they have to buy a minimum amount. Wouldn't that be something? But uh, so many of our, our biggest uh, uh, voices and trade associations will not get behind that, even though we know that it works and, and your packers are, are really uh, making a conscious effort to buy more cash cattle and it's helped the market. Let's look at your, your live steers and heifers last week. Uh, in your five area feeding region from 103 all the way to 110. Live steer weighted average was 106.59, up $1.53. Uh, your dressed steers and heifers range in price from 167 to 173. Most of that dress trade happened late in the week, a lot of it on Friday in Nebraska. Your dressed steer weighted average 169.41, a dollar and 37 cents higher than the weighted average from the previous week. Nationwide cash sales, 130,300 head. Uh, your formula sales last week, 252,500 head. But still, this is about as good of a cash uh, sales volume as, as we ever see anymore, and especially in a long time there. But about 15% of that uh, negotiated cash trade was for the two to four week delivery. Negotiated grid 
which some people think is going to uh, save the industry somehow, only 29,200 head. Box beef cutout values were higher again, uh, so we, uh, we know that your packers have a lot more control in the price of what they're selling than your feed cattle feeders have on what they're selling. But uh, also we noted that last week we didn't have as good a movement of box beef cutout values uh, box beef product there and we're getting some resistance there and that's just kind of what happens but uh, Monday we did have uh, confirmed sales don't look at USDA reports because not one hoof confirmed by USDA was sold negotiated cash on Monday but in reality there was significant trade in Texas about 8,000 head at 105 and, and how they can totally miss that and not report it at all when we got mandatory price reporting. It happened before uh, the cutoff to, to, for that afternoon report. They didn't get the information in and they don't have any voluntary process to try to gather those sales. But $1.05 traded, significant trade in Texas. That's what your market's going to be for the most part in the Southern Plains. That's a buck lower. Uh, you know, the, some of the guys thought that that was probably as good a basis as they were going to get. And uh, so because the board was down just a little bit and then uh, they didn't think that uh, we'd be able to hold cash this week, how they can make that uh, decision at noon on Monday or before. It's unbelievable. But uh, anyway, likely going to see lower cash this week. It's already a buck lower in Texas. Uh, let's see. Don't forget that Fredonia Livestock Auctions got their big anniversary special, about 3,000 head. It's going to be here uh, on Tuesday, so don't miss that. Uh, also, don't forget that, uh, that we've got a big sale coming up in Creston, Iowa on Wednesday. They've got their uh, big barbecue special there. So talk to Kurt Spore leader there. They're expecting an awful good run in Creston, America for their, for their special on Wednesday. They will have free food there and I think the, the, uh, the buggies and the horses are already starting to line up for that deal because they usually get a t good turn out of those. But let's talk about your, your, uh, your feeder cattle markets on Monday, your real-time index. 142.55 late in the day on Monday. That was down 86 cents. So uh, that's real time. That's that includes Monday sales. Your steer tracker, the National Steer Tracker, which I don't talk about probably near enough, but that's your last 25 lots of index cattle was only at 138.98. So that's not the seven-day moving average. That's just the last sales of the day there and that gives you an idea kind of where that index is heading if we don't see significant change here uh, this week. Let's talk about your big high volume sales. Okay, uh, Oklahoma City, uh, Oklahoma National Stockyards, 8,500 head there. Feeder steers, three to ten dollars lower. I, I was not expecting it to be that much lower. Feeder heifers, three to five bucks lower, but like I said, your buyers were just could not wait uh, to just to, to just kind of wait each other out and see uh, who finally decided to start bidding because they were ready for some relief on these higher prices that they've been paying here pretty much all summer. Your calves four to nine dollars lower, so sharply lower there at our nation's feeder cattle market on Monday, Oklahoma National Stockyards. Joplin Regional Stockyards just up I-44 there into the four state region. Calves were two to five dollars lower in Joplin. Yearling feeders, the ones they had on hand there, steady to two dollars lower, but uh, still pretty impressive prices there. Look at the stick out deal out of Joplin on Monday. 58 head, 876 pound steers, 142.50. That's, that's, uh, that's a pretty good uh, quote right there out of Joplin on Monday. Uh, some other stick out deals, individual quotes. How about Bluegrass Stockyard South, Stanford, Kentucky, big string of steers and big steers, 120 head, 901 pound feeder steers in Stanford, Kentucky, bring $135 even. But the best quote that I saw anywhere on Monday come out of Sioux Falls Regional Livestock in Worthing, South Dakota, where you can watch that sale on DV auction there. 59 head, 830 pound steers bring 151.50. And that's your feeder flash for Tuesday.